Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. The International Labour Organization estimates that around 250 million children are in work instead of education and that the financial crisis will make it impossible to eliminate the worst forms of child labour by 2016. So what more should be done? We'll take a look at the situation now on Learning World. What do the vulnerable working children in Benin's biggest markets need? Education, social rehabilitation, or maybe learning a trade could protect them from tough working conditions. We visit West Africa now to look at one project aiming to end the exploitation of children, sometimes working in the most hazardous environments. The Ntokpa Market in Cotonou, Benin's largest city, is a transit point and destination for thousands of exploited children in West Africa. Here you can find some of the worst examples of child labor. Around 200,000 children are estimated to be trafficked every year in the region. They work as housemaids, farm workers, miners, or as traders on markets like this one. Benin, one of the poorest countries in the world, continues to see child labor flourish. Its roughly 800 kilometer border with Nigeria makes it far too easy for traffickers to skip detection. Many local NGOs, like the Foyer Don Bosco Association, have been fighting against child labor for years. Every day, its listening and orientation point at Cotonou's Market engages with the local street children. We find these children at the market, at places where they hang out, in areas where there's a lot of crime. We will talk and show them that we're ready to help them leave their current situation behind. In 2011, more than 2,400 street children pass through one of the three huts that the NGO operates from. The goal is to try to introduce them to some sort of education or vocational apprenticeship. All our work is based on the child's needs. We can take care of everything to help them out of their current situation. If they're not ready yet, they can always return to their current arrangement, where they will continue to be exploited. Everything we do is based on getting them into an apprenticeship program with a family or into a reception center. Last year, around 50 children decided to learn a trade while still living around the market. One of them is 13-year-old Thierry, who works as an apprentice in a tailor's workshop. I left home because my parents split up and I didn't get on well with my mum's new partner. I worked in the market for two years collecting iron and carrying baskets of tomatoes before coming to the workshop. I would like to become a tailor. A big part of the social worker's responsibility is to raise awareness about children's rights among traders in the market. Waidi Akani, who owns the workshop where Thierry works, is a big advocate of the apprenticeship program. He was also a street child and knows that if these youngsters don't get an education, they'll probably turn to a life of crime. Thierry will receive a diploma once he finishes his training in two or three years' time, but hundreds of other local street children aren't so lucky. Despite the best efforts of various projects, the number of child workers in Benin is increasing, says the International Labour Organization. We met their technical specialist in Geneva to get an overview on the problem of child labour. Let's hear more from him now. Patrick Quinn is part of the ILO's campaign for the elimination of child labour. The programme aims to eradicate the worst forms of the modern-day slave trade by 2016. 215 million children around the world are working in child labour. And more than half of this number are involved in what we call the worst forms of child labour, work that is actually dangerous to children's health and development. Some 70 million children around the world are not in school. So there's a big global problem which needs to be addressed. And if we look at where these children are, more than 60% of child labour is in agriculture. 
in, uh, in Banan, in Africa generally, we've seen uh, is our most worrying uh, trend, which is over the last four years, we've actually seen an increase in numbers of child labourers. So this is clearly a major concern for us. Equally, in South Asia, we are seeing some progress in tackling child labour. But because of the scale of the population in the region, it's still the largest concentration of child labour globally. But what are the main causes of child labour and how can we tackle it? Poverty is the fundamental cause of much child labour, but it's also very closely linked to lack of access to education. And within countries, it's linked to social protection systems which help to keep children in school. And very often it's like, like linked to the fact that adults don't have decent jobs. For example, children working in mines, working in construction, working with pesticides in agriculture. These are forms of work which clearly can be dangerous to a child. We have to make progress in ensuring all children are in school. We have to put in place social protection programmes so that poor families do not have to pull children out of school if there's a family crisis or a situation, uh, a difficult situation in the country. Thirdly, we have to put in place uh, law enforcement measures to try and make sure that compulsory education actually means that and children attend school and that employers do not use child labour. And fourthly, we have to make sure that adults have decent jobs because if adults are working and are able to support their families, their children are much more likely to be in school. And now we go to South Asia, which remains a child labor black spot to meet Suzai. Extraordinarily, he has beaten all the odds in order to become an advocate and charity worker helping abused children in India. I was nowhere, but now I'm here. Should it be the plan of God? Why should I undergo all these experiences? Why me? Born during the ethnic conflict in what was Burma, Sasai Raj escaped to a country that offered more promise. So I came to India with all the tears, with the unhappy situation in Burma with my family. So I started to working first in my life is in Brooklyn, loading and unloading work. The sixth child in the family, Sir Raj, suffered terrible loss early on when four of his siblings died and he was left to support the others. Influenced by members of the Young Christian Workers Association, Sir Raj began campaigning for the rights of unprotected workers like himself. But tragedy struck once again when his own 15-year-old son drowned. With all my dream in abroad and things like that, it was very sad. Then I thought of, OK, that is also my challenge. In 1994, Sasai Raj started Jiva Jyoti, or Everlasting Life, an organisation he dedicated to the memory of his son. My aim was, even though I am not educated, I wanted to be uh, educating the children. Over the past 18 years, Jiva Jyoti has helped thousands of young people. It provides shelter for 25 street children and those from the rice mills and brick kilns in surrounding villages, the very places Susai Raj worked in his youth. Jiva Jyoti also campaigns for workers' rights, especially against bonded labour, which is still prevalent in India despite being outlawed. Abuse is common within these confined walls, like the case of this teenage girl pregnant with her third child having lost her first during childbirth. These bonded labourers are most of them, maybe 90% of them is a tribal background, Kuravas, and they are working as a families, including the children, they are forced to work to support the family. This man says he hurt his foot while working in the brick kiln, but has never received any medical help. <laughs> With no identity of their own, many labourers say they're treated like cattle, put to work for as long as they're fit, and then discarded. While most would give up in the face of tragedy, Sisai Raj decided to persevere to help other children regain their childhood, something he himself will never get back. My prayer always, I wanted to be a salt, the earth, and the light of the world. Since 1995, around 5,000 children have received non-formal education. The majority then enrol at local schools.
So, what is more has to be done to eliminate child labor? Share your ideas with us on our social media pages. We will be back next week as usual. Goodbye from me and the Learning World team. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.